Welcome everyone to the eighth Virtual South Summit. And today is a special treat. It's on education. And I have with me Bania Benjumea, the founder of South Summit. Hello Paris, how are you? Hello everybody, everybody from there. Hello everybody from everywhere. Here we are in Madrid, in Spain, in Virtual South Summit. It's Education Virtual South Summit. And uh, here we are in this incredible space, in this war room, is the war room from the IE universities, something, some place absolutely incredible. And you see these people, these amazing people is on our back, is the incredible jury, fantastic jury, and the fantastic startups they are going to pitch just now. And uh, well, here, as you know, we are in South Summit, and I think that this virtual South Summit is especially important because it's education. And uh, I think we all know that education is really one of the most important issues. And most, mu much more now, after, or oh, we are still in the pandemic, we are not, thank God, in the worst moment, but still we are in the pandemic and we always remember everyone that is uh, having a terrible time and difficult times. But uh, education is the one thing that has to change a lot. And this is what we are going to do here in this virtual South Summit, always together with our partner in crime since the very beginning, the IE University and all our partners and all our partners, corporation, investors, founders, and, uh, and with all of you. So here we are, Paris. I don't want to waste not one single second more because we have lots of things to do today. Great things. Thank you, Maria. Yes, as you heard, education has changed forever. Uh, it's going to continue to change, and that's why these startups today are really disruptive. And they're going to show us the way, hopefully, as to where ed tech is going to play such a big part in the future. I'm not here only representing South Summit with Maria, but I'm here representing IE University as managing director of the Venture Lab. IE University has been the partner in crime, as Maria said, from the very beginning, totally committed to disrupting higher education. Entrepreneurship, one of our biggest values, is one where we walk the talk. Always highly ranked in this area, most of our students actually come to IE because of entrepreneurship. And entrepreneurship has become, over the last few years, not a way of becoming an entrepreneur, but a way of learning what the world is all about. Because it taught us how to deal with uncertainty for the last few years. And with COVID, what a better way to be prepared because all of us should be seeing opportunity in uncertainty. So let's begin. Let's start with our startup competition. Today we're gonna to start with our startup competition and then we're gonna have a few panels after that. So let me tell you how this is gonna work. Uh, we have five startups. The winner of today's competition is gonna be a, on a fast track to the 100 finalists of our main South Summit in October. Today we have an amazing jury, as Maria said. Let me go through some of the names. We have Tomas Guida from All Iron Ventures. We have Jose Maria Pina from Aptki. We have Tobias Bauer from Blockchain Founders Fund. We have Benoit Ritz from B Bright Eye Ventures. We have Laurent Arendt from B Startup 10 de Banco Sabadell. We have Rodolfo Carpentier from DAD, DAD. We have Luz Adel Ibanez from Draper B1. We have Oscar Ramos from China Accelerator. We have Desiree Al Aliza from Seed by EY Peru. We have Oriol Juncosa from Encomenda Smart Capital. We have Dennis Kerpenstein from Faraday Venture Partners. We have Jaime Canosa from Ferrovial. We have Anna Volstein from Kaya. We have Rita Alshanti from Oasis 500. Alejandro Villanueva from Possible, Possible Mexico. We have Ali Jarade from Scale Plus. Javier Villamizar from SoftBank, and Andres Dancausa from The Venture City. Amazing lineup. Well, I would have expected that because education is where everybody is investing today. So let's begin. Uh, just to remind you some of the criteria that we're going to be using. We're going to be using innovation. Uh, we're going to be using their scalability. We're going to be using 
the team, and how investable these startups are. They'll have five minutes to present, and then we're going to have some Q&A. So let's begin. Our first startup. Our first startup comes from the United Arab Emirates. It's called EFLO Education, represented by Samer Bawab, who is the Strategic Partnerships Manager. Let's see what they do. It is a, a cloud-based platform that enables learning, delivery, and management by conserving the human element in distance learning through conversational course format. Join me in welcoming eFlow Education. According to a recent UNICEF study, it was approximated that there are 463 million learners or 31% of school children worldwide who cannot be reached by digital broadcast or remote learning programs, and they're unable to learn. In fact, what we discovered during the start of the pandemic last year, and even up until this point, is that many of these learners face significant challenges that include weak internet connectivity and consistent power cutouts, weak digital skills, so not being able to log into maybe uh, Zoom or more advanced LMS systems like Google Classroom and Moodle, and essentially no access to laptops or computers. Some learners may only have one mobile device in the entire home. So in order to address these challenges, we built eFlow, which is a user-friendly platform that allows teachers and administrators to easily create and deliver these educational materials to these vulnerable and underprivileged communities over common messaging apps like WhatsApp. So how it works is very simple. We provide an authoring tool, which allows these teachers to easily create uh, very simple, for example, courses, content, a list of questions like multiple choice, uh, true and false, short answer, and even create surveys and games. We also provide a learner management page. So if there's a large amount of learners that these administrators or teachers are dealing with, they can segment them based on age, demographic, or uh, age, um, and uh, location. So we also provide course delivery and live tracking. So this also provides the chatbot com uh, communicates with each student over WhatsApp individually. Instructors are able to monitor and, and check the learner's progress as they're going through the course and directly intervene and help if needed. So what makes eFlow different and our unique value proposition is that uh, it directly integrates with WhatsApp and creates a frictionless experience as many of the users already know how to use WhatsApp. And with a 1.5 billion active user base, uh, the content can be delivered and easily sent to these users so they can learn right away. Also, since the chatbot is built for education, it has education games, as well as activities, leaderboards, and points, which create engagement with the learners. And finally, our chatbot learns from different learning styles and adapts those accordingly for the best learning experience. So behind every great uh, product, there's a great team. And ours consists of uh, some of the best talent around the world that come from business backgrounds, education, and even technology. Lastly, we, we have worked with several organizations doing various implementations for our chatbot, from teaching refugee children about basic language and numeracy, to incorporating our chatbot uh, for STEM ste uh, STEAM courses like cybersecurity, and finally, uh, developing micro business courses for entrepreneurs. Thank you. All right, thank you, Samer. Eid Mubarak. I hope you guys are having a good holiday in the Middle East. All right, Eid so Mubarak. thank you. You're welcome. Questions from the jury, uh, Javier. Thank you, Paris. Uh, my question is related to um, scalability of this solution, uh, considering that the challenge uh, that, that the founder proposed about teachers not being able to deliver these lessons to students is, is not only connectivity, uh, but it's also related to teachers uh, being savvy on using these kind of platforms. So how friendly is for a teacher that has never used an LMS or, or any of these platforms to actually go and develop the lessons uh, in your platform? Thank you very much, Javier, for this great question. Um, and in regards, and, and to address that directly, um, what we've done is when we present the solution uh, to these communities and to these specifically the teachers uh, that are working with the learners, uh, 
we have a very hands-on training process that we have. So it's really making sure first they understand the value that the solution is providing and that it will make their life easier. And the second is ensuring that the platform is easy to use. So it's very intuitive. The buttons are very easy to use. Uh, it's not very complex. They're very simple tasks to set up. And what we're providing really is, an, is a tool that is gonna allow them uh, to save time and to, again, manage their students more effectively on WhatsApp. So I think with, with consistent training, hands-on training, having video sessions, uh, we have global partners around the world now that uh, will actually assist us when it comes to the language barrier and working with the different communities. Uh, so we've, we've, we've obviously had to kind of test and, and go, uh, grow and learn as from this, but uh, we really refined the teacher training as, as it's also very important uh, for a successful uh, uh, implementation. All right, thank you, Samer. Any more questions from the jury? We got time for one more? Nope, okay, moving right along. Our next startup is called GopherClick. GopherClip is a corporate e-learning platform that transforms interaction into increased knowledge thanks to its intuitive and customizable interface. GoForClick is from Argentina and is represented by its CMO, Agustina De Nicola. Join me in welcoming GoForClick. Hi, everyone. I'm Agustina, the CMO at GoForClick. Thank you for having us. So for many years, me and the other founders uh, have worked in the online training field, and we realized companies and consultants had a great and uh, huge problem. They were losing a lot of money due to lack of engagement. Meanwhile, they were uh, missing the chance to stand out and upskill their staff. So to solve that out, we have created a social learning platform in order to switch the model and give the audience an active role in a co-creation of new ideas and new knowledge. So we reach 90% of engagement. So that is cool. And we gather the best of LMS with interactive tools. So we create a collaborative learning experience that stand out. So it's quite simple. We connect people with similar interests, we engage them by uh, challenging them, and we build learning communities around that. So our main clients are training consultants, and they can be found either in training consultant companies, um, but in corporate as well. So there are a lot, and um, the market is almost on your $3 billion, and we're aiming to catch 100% of that Hispanic American market. So um, we aim to establish a different position among our competitors by gathering all the best of LMS, but with a main and deep uh, focus on collaborative and um, social uh, tasks and capabilities. So uh, on the last uh, 12 months, after our launch, we have reached a, main, a huge milestone because we built uh, near 50K uh, and we have clients, frequent clients in three different regions. So uh, meanwhile, we, we have detected we had a, a problem because we have a CAC a little bit high. So to solve that out, we have created a new sales uh, path with automatic sales to capture um, smaller clients. And this year we have a main goal that is to reach 300K of milling, uh, keeping clients in 80 different countries. So the go-to-market will be outbound, inbound and reselling program basically. And please let me introduce our great team. We are four founders, full dedicated, and we have a development team and great advisory team board here in Spain. So to finish, please let me say that uh, we believe that humanizing online training is not, no longer our wish, but a global need. So we hope you join us. Thank you very much. All right, Agustina. Agustina, how is it in Buenos Aires right now? Good? You're muted. You're muted. 
I'm. Yes, you can speak. I'm actually in Barcelona. Oh, Hi. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, this is the amazing yeah. thing of this uh, competition. You've got UAE, then Argentina, truly global. All right. Let's keep going with our uh, jury now. Oriol Juncosa. Hi. Hello. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for the presentation. I, I'm, I have a question. Could you clarify, Agustina, what is your business model? Okay. And and whether you are actually also broadening uh, uh, your activities uh, to gather content from uh, different providers, and whether the, and whether you expect sort of to gain some commissions for that. And by business model, I mean, are you sort of more of a SaaS platform? Are you more of a um, marketplace, okay, and how do you see that evolving into the future? Thank you. Uh, mute. Agustina, mute. You're still muted, Agustina. It's not, it's. Yeah, we just heard you. Try the mute again. Try the big button. Yeah, it seems okay. like okay now. Okay, great. Thanks. My my yeah, my computer is having some issues. Uh, thank you, Oriol, for your question. Uh, in fact, we are a SaaS, and we are mainly, um, we are not producing or selling content. Um, on the other hand, we try to be a platform that simplifies uh, the path of learning education, but with a clear focus on the uh, uh, audience interaction and audience new ideas. So, in fact, new ideas and new knowledge comes from interaction and, um, yeah, it, it comes from the challenges we, we propose within the platform. So, our platforms try to gather all the best of LMS, all that you know that you can do with uh, the most popular LMS in the market but combined within the same platform with uh, challenges, interactive challenges that um, enables new knowledge and new ideas from people collaboration. All right. Thank you, Thank you Agustina. Next, we have um, Rodolfo. How are you, Rodolfo? Long time. Long time, yes. Uh, Paris, I mean, you are always very busy. <laughs> Agustina, can you tell me who are your main competitors? Yeah, um, it's a funny thing because, because we have, this year we have changed our competitors because we, when we have launched last year, we uh, find our competitors in LMS uh, because we hadn't had the challenges already uh, developed. But this year we find that we have our main competitors in uh, interactive and social uh, tools to create you know, knowledge, such as Miro, uh, such as SparkUp. Uh, so uh, we, we are regarding them to improve our, our development. Thank you. All right, thank you, Agustina. We have time for one more question. Benoit? Yeah, hi, sorry. I was just wondering about um, engagement. You mentioned that you had a 90% engagement rate. What, what does that actually mean? Um, and and how, what, what do you look to to um, ensure that, you know, that users are actively engaged? Yeah. What we have realized in the last year is that our clients they were not dropping out our courses. So the average of dropout of online courses is around 60%. And our clients, luckily, uh, has uh, around 90% of uh, people that is, that is finishing 
the online courses they they set on our platform. So that number can come uh, from from that uh, data that we gather. Our clients, we have almost no dropouts because of right. that. Because uh, when you are trying, when you are doing an online course, um, you are kind of living what you live in a live event or a live training but in an online environment. I mean, you start the course and some make us uh, or say hi, I says, hi, Benat, uh, I'm in Barcelona, where are you? Uh, it's interesting, it's uh, really interesting your answer uh, on that challenge, I'm living the same uh, reality or uh, I would like to work with you. Or, I mean, it's a continuous uh, like uh, energy and uh, yeah, it's engagement that that comes from that. All right, thank you. All right, moving right along. So, our third startup now. Our third startup is from the United Kingdom. It's called Mindstone. Mindstone allows you to take notes on and alongside online articles, websites, and PDFs. Share your thoughts with others and easily find them all again when needed. Can you imagine that? So representing Mindstone, we have Melody Lang, the co-founder and COO. Join me in welcoming Mindstone. Hi, I'm Melody. I'm a mathematician and research scientist by background, but I have such a strong passion for education that this is where I spent most of my professional life, both as an operator and an investor. What I enjoy the most is being hands-on, which is why I decided to co-found Mindstone with Josh, our CEO. Josh co-founded Super Awesome, the largest kids tech company that got acquired by Epic Games last summer. For this new venture, Josh wanted to have an even bigger impact and decided to focus on education. He convinced Florian and Stefan to follow him on the engineering side and Patrick to join as our knowledgeable educator. Patrick spent the last 20 years teaching philosophy with a focus on the theory of knowledge. So what's the premise behind Mindstone? Well, today, if you want to learn something new, you need to overcome an overwhelming amount of options. Mindstone automatically generates the best learning pathway filled with content from the internet. So you can reach your learning goals in the most efficient way. Emma, for instance, is an accountant. She's scared her job is gonna become obsolete due to automation. So she decides to upskill to become a finance director. Mindstone understands her current knowledge levels and personal interests through a series of questions and context clues. Emma is then presented with a learning pathway filled with content from the internet. That pathway gets updated as she goes through its content, whether it's a podcast she listens to on her way to work or a video she watches on her laptop in the evening. Emma enjoys going through spaced repetition practice during her lunch breaks and is really motivated, not only because the content is relevant to her, but also because she gets to interact with other learners going through the same material. She gives and receives feedback from her peers and gets all her questions answered. Emma can monitor her progress by looking at a complete record of her competencies mapped across various dimensions, such as knowledge, skills, character, and meta learning. After just a few months of learning seamlessly during her daily life, Emma reaches her goal and even has a record she can show to her current or future employer. How are we progressing toward that vision? We launched a minimum viable product with content annotation, sharing, and some learning functionality. Only 10 weeks after this launch, we reached a 30% conversion rate on our website, over 35,000 pieces of user-generated content per month, with a 100% month-on-month usage increase. The internet made information universally accessible. Google organized it, and now Mindstone helps you not just consume, but really learn from it. Let's do this together. All right, thank you, Melody. Great presentation. Can I have uh, some questions from, okay, we got one here from the jury. Yeah, Javier. Thank you, Paris. Uh, so my question is related to the vision versus the MVP. H how far are you 
on developing something that really helped an employee develop that, you know, upskilling uh, uh, process or upskilling uh, itinerary or roadmap. Uh, because I, I tried the site and it's basically an annotation kind of bookmarking uh, tool. Yeah, absolutely. That's going to that's gonna take um, a while. So we're going to build our product in three stages. And now we are at stage one of our product that is not even fully completed. So the reason we're going to do this in that order is because in stage one, we're going to target self-directed learners so professionals who are working in knowledge intensive industries so those so it's true in stage one you, you can see us as closer to a productivity tool why because we want these thought leaders and influencers and subject matter experts to be filling the the, the platform with their content then we're going to be moving on to stage two where two percent are going to be creating these learning pathways for the 98% that are going to consume it. And that's where in stage two, we're going to be helpful for reskillers, upskillers, job seekers with custom learning pathways. So the expert in you know, finance or cryptocurrency will create their custom learning pathways that Emma can follow. And in stage three, that's going to be the personalized learning pathway. So it's another level uh, where we're going to add um, an additional layer of uh, artificial intelligence. But we're building that in stages. Thank you. Thank you, Melody. Uh, it's amazing how you keep the same level of energy in your presentation as in when you're answering questions. Great. <laughs> I'm going to hand it to you. All right, uh, Andres, we got some questions from you. Yeah. Thank you, Paris. Uh, congrats, Melody, on your presentation. Super great company. I, uh, I was wondering, actually, how are you organizing and how are you using the information? I mean, it's just information that you recommend uh, to learn with, or are you using information also to structure uh, exercises uh, or other stuff uh, to learn by doing uh, with your product? Okay, so for now, we're not recommending content. For now, you're the one uploading your content to the platform. And we want to leverage learning science principles. So we want to really uh, empower you as a learner. That's why we decided to take the full um, learner-centric approach and help you develop best learning practices. So what does um, yes, what does it look like for you to maybe highlight color coding your highlights? It's really developing those habits for you to to be empowered as a learner. So in that sense, um, we're not going to be uh, recommending content, we're going to leverage the community and have a sophisticated rating system to see what has helped this or that learner to learn better or so, uh, you know, the stack overflow uh, idea. So imagine that system to surface quality content from this chaos of information that's currently is available on the internet. So that is okay. the idea. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Melody. Okay, we have a question from Tomas. Yes. Hello, Melody. Congratulations on the presentation. Um, my question is regarding of Mindstone, the vision of Mindstone to become a, a consumer-facing platform or an embedded product through our through other platforms. Okay. Currently, we're a standalone web app, and we've also got the iOS app in 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 beta. In beta. So the idea would be to go for the former of the two options you mentioned. So really be a standalone learner centric B2C product. Now, never say never, right? I mean, if there's some opportunity of partnerships and embedding access to Mindstone in another product, let's, let's definitely discuss. But for now, the positioning we took was, was more to be a, a standalone. All right, thank you. We have time for one last question. Unfortunately, I see there's a lot of you who want to ask, but we only have time for one more. Tobias? Oh yeah, thank you so much for the presentation. Uh, really enjoyed it. I just have a quick question regarding your custom acquisition strategy and like how much it costs you right now to get, in, to get a customer and basically then thinking about 
the lifetime value of a customer. Okay. So currently um, we are going for the influencers. So we've, we've, we're running some experiments. As you can see, we're very early in our journey and uh, we haven't pushed the growth button yet. We're really uh, finding our way and we want to do it right. But um, an example of an experiment we did for customer acquisition is there's an influencer on YouTube who's got 2 million uh, subscribers and followers and he's called the armchair historian. So if you look, you, you will see there's a, um, he's used Mindstone to create a library of content to then create his video for his followers. So that's, that's definitely the route we're taking. It's more of the uh, influencer avenue in terms of customer acquisition. So in terms of cost, um, I would say, well, these are one off uh, costs for experiments, but the idea is that we've just hired now a head of community and that's really to build it from the ground up. And so have that community of our current existing power users and have them as evangelists um, and really be the ones helping us grow from, from that angle. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Melody. All right, let's keep going. Our fourth startup is called Cheeks Up. Yes, Cheeks Up is from Latvia. Cheeks Up is a speech therapy, therapy game for children that substitutes part of therapy sessions for sound articulation. Representing Cheeks Up is Ilzi Zaharin, the CEO. Join me in welcoming Cheeks Up. Cheeks Up. It's a computer game for easy speech homework. So we are automating the homework tasks for face to tongue exercises and sound articulation. But why do we need something like this? It's because parents struggle with doing speech therapy homeworks, but not because they don't want to do that, because they don't know how to do that. They don't know how to engage the child in these boring tasks. So instead of giving a list of words what to repeat at home, or list of exercises, what to, to do in front of the mirror at home, we teach everything to our bunny. So it's engaging, emotional, and fun. And they have this therapy plan in their homes at their convenience, and there's no struggle for uh, scheduling. You know, the therapist can work only at this time, but the parents can make it only at this time. So. The gamified experience also helps with the engagement. And that means that we can reach the result faster. And thanks to our web platform, we can work remotely. So we record the plans and send them to the patient anywhere in the world. Uh, till now, we've been in working in Latvia. Uh, we've uh, helped to reach more than 120 goals for children with different kinds of uh, um, impairments and we've created uh, more than 300 plans in Latvian language. These clients have been in private, mar uh, private market and uh, on average, they paid 50 euros a month. Uh, along the way, we also trained other uh, therapists and this helped us to understand what kind of product actually would be um, able for, uh, for scalability to involve other speech therapists. And the market opportunity is there because 10% of all children have some kind of a speech disorder. We're working right now in Latvia, but in Spanish speaking community, there are 5 million children alone who need this kind of a help. Uh, so but about the competition, uh, there are some competitors who also do applications in uh, Spanish language, but none of them are personalized intervention. And this is how healthcare has to go right now it has to be personalized uh, we have already created tense plans in spanish language and that is because we have this fantastic team member francisco javier who lives in latvia but he's uh, actually from spain and he knows everything about uh, philology uh, and sound and together with me we make, we make a great team and of course robert who is our technical guy and helps with the technical uh, performance. Thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to hear the question. All right. Thank you, Ilse. So Q&A time. Questions from the jury. All right. Javier. 
Thank you, Paris. We'd like to hear a little bit about the monetization strategy. You know, is this a, a start with a kind of a freemium model or, or how do you see this evolving? Thank you. Um, so I, we're thinking about the freemium model, but till now it was not working like that. Uh, parents were, uh, we, we tested different kind of uh, pricing strategies. Um, so there was a subscription fee, uh, but then later on, then we, when we understood how the product actually works, that uh, different kind of children need different kind of amount uh, in the therapy plans. So it more made sense to uh, pay for the use, like how much they're using, that's, that's the amount they're paying. And uh, right now we're kind of sticking with this uh, uh, strategy at the moment, but uh, when we will be able to open it more like a, a web platform where uh, it covers uh, most of the cases, then we are thinking to go to the subscription uh, plan. All right, Ilza, thank you. Uh, ben Benoit? Mute? I think you're on mute. Sorry, uh, a question around how scalable this is. Um, how do you how do you create? I mean, you mentioned that you create personal plans for each of this, the the children. How exactly does it happen? How much does it cost? And how much time does it take? Yeah, thank you. This uh, question uh, is a really good one because this was the tricky part of it. Um, since I'm a speech therapist and I was uh, really passionate about uh, about the service that we're providing. Uh, and um, it took around one to two hours to create uh, each plan. Uh, but what we realized that after this uh, interaction with private clients, we understood what they need. And eventually we create a library. So this number, what I mentioned, 300 plans, uh, right now, I'm not creating anything in Latvian, addition, in Latvian language, anything additional. So there becomes a point uh, where we have covered most of the basic needs and then we can sell it like, uh, like books or like exercises or something like that. So it takes an investment to create the content in each language, but when it's done, uh, for uh, every uh, like uh, speech uh, impairment, for some problems there's like nothing new is coming up because the language stays the same you know all is the same rrr is the same and it will be the same 20 years from now so it kind of it, it, it needs a bigger uh, investment at the beginning uh, than maybe other things but then uh, it kind of gives you back that what you put in you can uh, use one plan for many children that struggle with the same things. Got it, thank you. All right, thank you, Ilse. Last question, Chema Pina. You're on mute, Chema. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Just one thing, if it's possible to, to explain more in detail who is the customer, because we understand who is the user, but who is the customer? Yes, uh, so the customer right now is parents. So it's a private market parents who pay for the service. Uh, since for the speech therapy, the market is kind of very divided. Some, in some countries, you can receive it in a healthcare utility. In some countries, it's in uh, kindergarten. So we have it in both. Uh, and uh, in, uh, if, when we want to scale, uh, then we need to interact with kindergarten. So it's uh, government uh, or, uh, private clinics, uh, any kind of institution where they help children, you know, where they have this speech therapy service. Uh, but in Latvia, a uh, big chunk of, uh, of this is actually kindergarten, like, because uh, for whom we help the most is actually children with really easy um, problems, if I can say it in, in, in simple language language and they are uh, what you have in every day in, the, in a kindergarten like environment. So uh, we started with the private market, but the next step is uh, either private uh, parents uh, in a bigger scale or also getting involved uh, uh, yeah, the, the institutions 
So it's schools and kindergartens, and depending from the country, what's the age uh, when they start to offer the service and when they start the school. All right. All right. Thank you, Ilse. All right, moving right along. So as you see, we've been to the UAE, we've been to Argentina, we've been to the UK, Latvia. What's next? Spain, of course. Our next startup and last for this edition is Simple Cloud Education based in Spain, represented by Sergio Gonzalez, the president and co-founder. Now, what do they do? Simple Cloud Education enables real-time remote education and collaboration to even the most demanding courses and projects using a global digital education workplace. Join me in welcoming Simple Cloud Education. Hello, everyone. Simple Cloud Education is a global cloud-based works and service solution for remote and hybrid education. We help institutions, teachers, and corporate training companies in Europe and North America deliver even their most demanding courses to students based anywhere, expanding the campuses to the world. Simple Cloud is uniquely automated and serves the needs of even the most demanding courses in AAC, arts, design, or research, offering powerful, optimized, and secure virtual environments. Virtual desktops with or without GPU can be dynamically spin up in less than one minute with any commercial or proprietary software, allowing seamless teaching and collaboration from anywhere. It leverages IBM Cloud, VMware, NVIDIA, and Simple Cloud proprietary technologies, allowing users to connect from any device and any location. Simple Cloud reinforces accessibility and equality to higher education. The pandemic has accelerated the demand for cloud technology, which was the key enabler for remote education. But the cloud is made for IT professionals and it's very complex to onboarding users, such as teachers or students. In order to build custom environments for specific needs, there is still a need to build a whole suite of processes which can be a real blocker, both from a timing and economic perspective. Things like educational licenses, student support, task management, real-time student screen monitoring, uh, secure exams, remote assistance, identity management, are problems that need to be solved individually by each institution. According to leading experts like Gartner, at this moment, we are one of the only two companies in the world who can achieve a level of automation where a user can create a secure and ready to go environment in less than 30 minutes with no IT skills and no new hardware needed. Once a virtual campus is created, teachers and students can connect anytime to any allowed classroom in less, in less than 60 seconds and can collaborate within that environment as if they were in the same classroom or lab with a similar degree of security and interaction. In addition, Simple Cloud provides unique solutions for automation, flexibility, latency, and collaboration workflows. We are focused on the desktop as a service segment, which is the fastest growing segment of remote education and working technologies, according to Gartner. It will move to 3 billion in the next two years. Additionally, we also provide high performance computing services in the cloud, which is market, which market worth is right now $10 billion yearly. AWS, Azure or IBM are the leading companies offering infrastructure in the cloud with other smaller players. But only a few can integrate easily and all the, all the layers in a usable, secure, and reliable way. Easily manageable by non-expert users and applicable to high demanding projects. We are supported globally by IBM and appear in their catalog. Simple Cloud is really easy, efficient, collaborative, flexible, and secure. Simple Cloud is the future of higher education. We have over 40 clients and POX with leading institutions as well as clients in media, entertainment, engineering, or advertising, making the perfect bridge between the academic and working world. The team is innovative, the team is innovative and passionate. The technology is proven, the market is booming. Now is the time to invest. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Sergio. Questions from the jury? Any questions? We got time. All right, here we go. Benoit? Hi, yeah, just uh, what is your ideal customer profile? Um, you know, you mentioned higher education, but but who, what is specifically, what kind of university makes the most, uh, for, for what kind of university does this make the most sense? Hello? Hi, yeah, so the, the question was, what is your ideal customer profile? And for what kind of university does this make the most sense? I don't know if that if you heard that. Uh, Sergio, can you can you hear me? Uh, Sergio, you're on mute. Uh, 
Sergio? I, I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, now we can hear you. Did... Yes, I, I, could, I could not hear you. Right I can hear you, but not right Okay, uh, the question was, what is your ideal customer profile? Okay, uh, in the case of education, our, our main customers are universities and higher education institutions uh, that teach either engineering uh, academics or, or engineering schools, uh, art schools, um, uh, everything that has to do with um, CAD, so uh, modeling, uh, video games, so any, any higher education that requires uh, collaborative environments with highly demanding infrastructure, especially, because at the end we are always talking about LMS, uh, let's say technologies to actually have courses and, and management of content online. But at the end of the day, it, it, it translates into users and students that need to make their homework, train their skills in, in, in computer applications, either in Linux or Windows. And at the end, all that management of, of virtual labs and virtual environment that can be, you know, accessed remotely, but in a very efficient and easy to use manner. And let's say collaboratively, collaboratively uh, managed in a way that a classroom can be a real classroom, even people is remotely distributed. Uh, it's, it's something that is uh, a gap afterwards. So we can apply to any institution that provides higher education and requires, let's say, computer to provide the or applications uh, within computers to provide the, the courses. All right, thank you, Sergio. Benoit, did you want to ask the second part of the question? What kind of university does this make the most sense for? Sure, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like specifically, is there a particular size of university um, that this makes the most sense for? Is it, does it make more sense for universities that are um, teaching offline versus online? Like who, who, yeah, which, what does it look like? Well, right now we already have uh, universities working with us, uh, both in Spain, France, England, and, and the US. And basically, uh, we are now uh, also in conversations with uh, universities in Mexico and Colombia. So we don't have a specific size. We have, mm, let's say, institutions from 50 to 70 seats, not users, but seats in, in, their, in, their, in their schools. And, uh, and to universities up to 10,000 uh, 10, 10, uh, users that are actually managed by a single center with their own internal active directory. So at the end, it's, 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 it's a whole brand. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that every single student uh, in that university will require our service, but, but at the end, it's a service that can be promoted for certain courses or classes within that type of university. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, thank you. I think we have time for one more question. Your hand was up, Javier. Javier? Yeah, my question is, uh, my understanding is that the company has other verticals, not only education. Um, how, how do they foresee scaling their education push? Is this core for the company or is it just one out of multiple sectors that they are uh, offering the cloud services to? Yeah, that's a good question. Actually, uh, it's a core one from the, from, the, from the company. It was one of the first approaches. Actually, our first customer was a uh, a new school that was created at that time and they, they wanted to go 100% to the cloud. So in, in our case, education for us is, is, is strategic in this case, because once you have the users, you know, knowing a real platform that can be used in the, in, in the real world, in real uh, projects and in real companies, it's very easy to actually, you know, get internships from, from companies and get relationships between different universities and companies and universities. So it's like, you know, feeding the user le a, a way of learning and not only the content they learn, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a combination of both things. So for us, educational is, 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 is a core uh, vertical. Okay, thank you, Sergio. We're running out of time, so let's keep going. All right, so I need to remind the jury members, you all need to vote, please. Uh, we've had five startups pitch, and we're gonna announce the winner at the end of this session. And that winner will have a fast track to the South Summit. It will be face to face in October. So let's keep going. Please remember to vote. All right, now we're going to have a panel. And this is going to be a conversation with Ironhack. So let me introduce the two panelists. Our first panelist is going to be Lucia Figar. She is the IE Chief of Corporate Innovation and Ventures, and she's the chairwoman of IE Rockets. A good friend and colleague, Lucia Figar. And she will be interviewing. 
Gonzalo Manrique. Gonzalo Manrique is the co-founder of Ironhack, the leading tech boot camp outside of the U.S. with over 8,000 grads, nine campuses, and over 125 employees. Lucia, the floor is yours. Mute. Uh, you're on mute, Lucia. Better now? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now, Lucia. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Paris. Uh, congrats in advance to, to the South Summit and all the organization. And thank you especially to Gonzalo Manrique, who's joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, Gonzalo, engineer, uh, MBA Wharton. Uh, thanks for joining us. It is a pleasure and a privilege having you here being one of the most successful EdTech startup founders in Spain. And my first question would be, uh, how have you managed in one of the worst years for the whole world and very special for, for education with 3.8 billion students being locked uh, globally? How have you managed to raise uh, a $20 million uh, series uh, of, of financing round just a few weeks, months ago? So, yeah, first of all, thanks, Lucia, for the kind words and Paris for the introduction and everybody for having me here. It's, it's a big pleasure. Um, so, you know, as when COVID hit, just to give some context, we were uh, an, an in person, 100% in person institution with uh, nine centers kind of across Europe and the Americas. So, you know, we got here, we got hit uh, pretty hard. And, um, you know, we went through some turbulent times um, for sure. We had actually raced around that nearly fell through. And, uh, but I'd, I'd say, you know, in the end of the day, what, what kind of kept us, um, kept us going and, and what really helped us raising the, the further round was a few things. Firstly, kind of a very quick transition to online. So that was, thankfully that was already on the roadmap for a little bit further on in the year we had. So we had already prepped uh, big time and had the skills in house, right? So that was, that was super, super helpful. Uh, secondly, we launched, we had already also been uh, working with some companies and were able to successfully launch uh, our B2B kind of side of things. Um, um, so those two new business lines proved to be really, really, um, let's say, proved to have good traction and proved to be very promising. Um, together with the fact that we had been establishing a long-term relationship with a few funds. Um, so we just, it was completely, we weren't even racing. Um, and uh, one of them just, you know, we had open conversations and one of, the, one of those funds, Lumos, uh, you know, in, in this case came up to us and, and you know, just, offered kind of to partner up more seriously. It was a very, very fast uh, process. One of those that, you know, maybe we're not so used to uh, here in Spain. Uh, it was kind of a month, we closed everything really, um, and, and it helped uh, again, the long-standing relationship but the tr mutual kind of trust uh, really, really helped. Um, and maybe third kind of resilience, you know, uh, I think goes goes a long way. Uh, we, you know, th there were some, again really difficult times so being able to take a step back um and uh, manage you know in the long term not, not not making any rush decisions or or any cuts that would in, in in many aspects right that wouldn't have been strategic that or could have hurt you know team morale or whatnot right that really really helped us to come out at the other end uh successfully uh, i'd say more or less successfully so now I remember you founded your first uh, campuses in Madrid and, and Miami. How many campuses do you have now around the world? Uh, so so we, we, we are present in nine locations uh, physically. So, uh, so Miami, as you said, Mexico, Sao Paulo, and then six in, in Europe. Six in Europe. And uh, what, what is your portfolio of programs? Uh, I know you started doing uh, coding, but now you do data science, you do user interface, uh, user design. Are, are you keeping, are you sticking to a core or are you uh, enlarging? So, so our, our, our vision is not to be kind of say, to spread too thin. So we, you know, over the past eight years, seven or eight years, we've developed four courses. Um, and, and we just want to go deeper on the placement side of things, right? So how can we make sure, you know, uh, uh, all of our students get placed and, and, struck, and provide more values to companies, right? We're not right now. We've been placing more or less one by one our students. Now we're trying to help companies 
solve this problem a little bit at scale, right? So that we, we wanna go deeper into the type of relationships we have with companies and with students, and not so much broader in the, in the sense of the, the, the product, uh, let's say, catalog. Okay, understood. And what would you say is a, is, is, is a secret of, of Iron Hack success? Because we've seen an incredible growth of the bootcamp model since it was born with a General Assembly, uh, many, many years ago. Uh, we've seen years of growth uh, 10 times, 17 times. Uh, so, uh, but then suddenly, uh, you know, in the past few years, many of them have disappeared. Uh, many of them have suffered a lot, uh, the, uh, the competition, but uh, we, we're very glad to see Iron Hack uh, uh, growing and, and expanding and even raising such an amazing round. So, so what do you think is the key of your success? So, I, so I'd say, there's a so, so it's a tough model right it's it's easy to start so in, in anyone you know i don't know if anyone but you know but it's, it's very easy to put together a, a, a curriculum right instructor and and get started in a city it, it gets harder to scale right and very few players have done so so i'd say in the space we have you know ga we have trilogy right who's done kind of b2b2c model kind of white labeling for for universities and um and not many not many more. I'm, I'm sure I'm missing. I'm missing maybe one or two more. But I'd say we haven't seen maybe that tremendous success. So Lambda, you know, it's maybe another interesting player who's doing it online, right, with ISA model. So, um, so, so to for us, I, I think we've done a, a couple of things differently. First, we had a global approach from the start. So we we've built an international team uh, with an international footprint from the get go. Uh, very lean. Um, and focusing on being a sustainable company with long-term kind of thinking. So we've been around for a while already, right? And have accelerated during the past few years. Um, and I'd say actually the kind of very secret, uh, so as if you wish, is kind of constant execution uh, on, on the value proposition for students and companies throughout time. So being able to constantly place, you know, uh, uh, close to or over 90% of our students within, you know, six months from graduation that has been, key in driving organic growth and um, word of mouth uh, and, and let's say uh, uh, referrals and, 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 and keeping companies coming back to us, right? So uh, that and, 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 you know, and building a community for, with our students and having, helping them, or, I don't know, or, or maybe making them really f feel a sense of belonging, right? To, to the brand, that's something that it's really strongly felt, right? And that goes, uh, uh, goes along with it. It's, it's very interesting uh, uh, seeing an ed tech entrepreneur like you, how this year, I, I, I'm amazed by two things that you've done, Gonzalo. First it is, is a transition online that you've just uh, explained, you know, in a, a moment when everybody, literally the whole planet has been locked down. Uh, you manage uh, to move from an immersive campus, 100% uh, physical, with people, I remember you told me that state coding 70, 80 hours a week because it's kind of uh, it creates addiction. Intense. And you suddenly moved on online, created a very sophisticated learning platform. Uh, do you think the model gets hurt in this transition? The, the, the students, the engagement, because we, we know very well at I University how, how different or how challenging is, is a student online or, or a student face to face? How, how do you see this? Yeah, so, so they were. A bunch of questions when we transition for sure and, and uh, a few around you know completion rates about or, on engagement and on actually efficacy of the program so those maybe were kind of the biggest ones another one was also we, 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 was the student ready right to really buy this type of program so uh, i think the timing like covid has really you know uh, uh, really propel this kind of uh, uh, value prop to to and, and made it more appealing to students so for the first time we have students wanting to do to give it a try at least right um in terms of efficacy we're seeing exactly the same if not increased in some cases right um the the, the type of student it could potentially be different so it's not only that you're saving money but not having to you know move to some city if you're not from that city, it's not only um, that kind of uh, let's say value proposition and cost, but also um, we've we've had insights from students that feel less exposed, right, when they're not in a classroom, 
having maybe to you know demonstrate what they know or they don't know right so they have kind of a buffer right and, and maybe people there's certainly a profile of people that feel more comfortable with that uh, so I, i'd say I, I, we're a big believers at iron hack on, on you know offering uh, options to different kinds of learners we don't think everybody learns in the same way um so uh, just to sum up i think you know right timing uh, great on on efficacy although there's still a, a massive way to go in the in, in the sense of how, the, how how the education experience is delivered right so we're only scratching the surface on uh you know we basically moved to zoom and supported by our platform but there's so much more right we're still in the very very early innings on on how we on on, on providing you a top-notch experience as a as a, an industry i'd say and particularly as a company as well huh? Oh, great. And the second thing, the second thing which is very interesting about uh, Iron Hack and, and your incredible performance is how you've moved from uh, B2C to B2B because uh, uh, I'm very used to, I, I've been with Gonzalo in many, many uh, events and, and, and debates and at the beginning it was all about, you know, we do this because universities don't do this. There's a huge skills gap. Uh, universities, public universities are not preparing students for the workforce. Uh, they don't give them the tech the hard or the soft skills. Uh, now you're partnering with universities, in fact. You know, is, is this part of their transformation journey of their innovation in terms of uh, curricula, digitization? How, how do you see this? Yeah, so, so th there's two aspects on, on our transition to B2B. And uh, uh, first one, right, uh, is, is we started offering students on our kind of a one by one case, right? So so we would just, you know, we graduate a bunch of students, match them up with companies. Right? Kind of and, uh, extracurricular or, or was it like? No, no, no it, it was it was kind of a, we, we have a curriculum that's kind of a jobs, we call it career hack, right? And it's kind of a, it, it prepares you for the job search on top of, you know, how you uh, deep dive in a particular technology. Um, then when it comes, you know, you graduate, then, then we're, matching you know students with companies right that that we get signed up uh and from there you know we get a bunch of placements right uh and that was the kind of initial value proposition then we started listening to companies that had more uh had problems uh, let's say at a bigger scale right so let's say you know uh i'm, I'm setting a tech hub in madrid right i need to hire you know three four hundred devs in, in in a year right uh, or I, you know, I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm firing a bunch of, or I, I need to downsize a bunch of departments, right? At the same time, I need to hire a hundred devs or data analysts. So with that type of problems that are, let's say that potentially, you know, uh, hit companies big time on their, in the P&Ls, right? We're finding to be very helpful partners. Uh, so in fact, we're presenting with Banco Santander, uh, you know, uh, some uh, a couple of big initiatives we run with them in an event next week in Madrid, um, and we've also partnered with you know Media Markt for reskilling in Germany and, and and a couple more banks there in Germany. So super, uh, let, let's say so solving, identifying and solving tech skill gaps at scale. That was that's one big part of it. Second, it's you know how can we help uh, universities. Um, kind of provide this type of uh, programs also in in maybe especially in areas where we're not present, right? So uh, we think this is a, the kind of tech skill gaps. It's 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 a problem that it's widely that that it's kind of extended all over uh, mm -hmm. Europe, Latin America, and whatnot, right? So we're only scratching the surface. So in order to kind of accelerate where we reach our reach, also, right? We, we think uh, partnership with the universities it's 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 a, it's a great uh, way to go and. Uh, and we've seen great success from Trilogy, right? In doing so in the States, no one has actually cracked this yet, maybe in, in, in Europe and Latin America. So we're trying to, we're trying to figure that out now. It's just interesting the two companies that you've just mentioned because uh, I see you're not working only with, with tech companies, but, uh, but really with a broader range of, of companies of any type. Do you actually see a, a great need of this kind of tech profiles, let's say in, in, in non, so-called tech, uh, essentially tech companies now? Do you see uh, that segment growing? That, that's the most interesting thing, right? When we started Iron Hack, uh, I mean, we were, our, our biggest bet was that the, you know, the, the, the need for this type of jobs was gonna increase uh, vastly, you know, with, with the years. And, and we saw, we thought there were gonna be two main drivers for this. First, you know, continuing increased investment 
in, in, in startups, right? Um, in the areas that we are, so let's say outside of the main hubs. Um, and secondly, you know, uh, um, acceleration of a digital transformation of big institutions. So, and that's what's happening now, right? So you have massive companies, you know, that are for the first time understanding tech as a core component of their kind of innovation and starting to internalize these capabilities. What well, that translates into is, you know, so I have the leaders in the team, but I need a bulk of, uh, you know, people and I need to really increase uh, the teams, right? And, and, and because their brand, maybe it's not positioned in the tech world or they mm -hmm. just, um, so yeah, they, they, they just don't even know how or have buy-in internally or maybe have not aligned on what the actual profiles are or whatever it is, right? We can help them navigate through that process and, and help them get really, you know, uh, uh, the top one percent of of tech talent, right? That it's what what everybody wants, no? I think, or a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And do you? Uh, how do you see uh, uh, moving to 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 educational technology as a sector? How do you see the market moving um, after well, after after this year? Because uh, I mean, education is a huge uh, sector measured in in trillions globally. You know, some reports say five trillion, five point five trillion. A trillion dollar globally which is huge uh, uh, second after health but it's a very it has a very low digitization uh, uh, I mean education is, 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 is basically uh, being delivered the same as 10 or even 100 years ago do you see after this uh, you know shock that we've lived uh, for the past months do you see the the uh, educational technology sector moving do you see a, a fast pace how do you see well, there's a lot of funds here, also investment funds, but how do you see the appetite, let's say, for, for startups in, in the educational technology sector? So, so appetite has definitely, you know, increased a, a lot, right? And, and uh, we've gone from being, you know, uh, maybe second tier sector, maybe in the tech world, to now being kind of maybe one of the spotlights. Uh, there's so many interesting things going on. And, uh, and I think, as you said, it's a sector that's still, you know, very low digitalization and uh, things are still delivering the same way. Universities agree are still this, the, the main path towards employment, right? Your first job. So, but th there's starting to be other options. They're starting, people are starting to really, you know, go online for higher ticket items. Uh, we're starting to see blends of, you know, education and, and, um, mm -hmm. and other type of content, more like entertainment, right? So that there, there's, there is, and, and technology, there's great platforms, you know, not only Zoom, right, that are starting to come up to try to improve on, on how we deliver the program. So I'm seeing, you know, good innovation. I'm seeing more adoption, right, from, from, from the traditional institutions. So universities, schools are more keen to try things for, you know, it's taking them, you know, pandemic to do so, but I think it's, you know, great timing. And certainly there's more money being deployed. So I think it's, you know, great timing and uh, to be in the sector so uh, let's see if we can you know uh, yeah make make a uh, make a dent in in, in 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 the sector what are you i haven't asked you this but what are you going to use the money for i mean you've got 20 million dollar in, yeah. in your account uh, what are your plans yeah so ben, ben I, I don't know if he's here so ben is an investor <laughs> also so the yeah, lowest we, we, here. yeah so so um so basically, our, our main priority right now is to is to really scale uh, B two B and and, uh, and and remote, right? There the are two lines that that are that we're more that, that, that it's you know we think now right now it's time to, to do so. In order to do that, you know we need we're going to strengthen you know product team, tech, education, and product teams, um, and then that will support you know the, the, the these two the expansion of these two new business lines. Um, in terms of geoscope, mainly uh, Europe and Latin America, within Europe, uh, you know, uh, Iberia, France, and Germany are kind of core for this year. Next year, we'll do a, so this year is going to be this kind of more core capabilities. Next year is going to be expansion. Um, um, yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, uh, we are on time, so, so congratulations. Uh, uh, good, good, good luck, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon in, in the next uh, EdTech events at IE University South Summit sure. with increasing performance around. Thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you very much, my pleasure. Thank you, Gonzalo. Thank you, Lucia. Amazing journey, Gonzalo. Congratulations.
All right. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Uh, moving right along. All right, we have one more panel uh, before we announce the winners. And from what I understand, the winners, uh, the winner has been chosen. But we'll have to wait a little bit before we find out who that is. So our next panel is going to be a conversation with former finalists of the South Summit. This is becoming very popular in our sessions because people want to hear what is it like for a South Summit finalist two, three years later. Well, let's find out. Our first startup is going to be Praxi Labs. Praxi Labs aims to provide equal opportunity for enhanced STEM education for students everywhere by providing 3D interactive virtual simulations. It is represented by my, well, bear with me with the pronunciation on this one, uh, Khadija Ebedwi, and he is the founder of Praxi Labs, one of the finalists of South Summit. Our second uh, startup, which is also a finalist of South Summit, is Lingo Kids, and it's represented by Cristobal Viedma, who's the CEO and founder. Now, what does Lingo Kids do? Lingo Kids empowers parents and educators with a structured home English learning program through a self-directed learning platform. So, let's begin. We're going to begin with Khadija. Khadija, salam alaikum. <laughs> How are you? I hope you're having a good Eid holiday. Yeah, exactly. That's today. <laughs> Thank you. Good. All right. So let's get going. Khadija, talk to us about what it's been like since you started, uh, since you were a finalist in, uh, in South Summit. What, what have the last couple of years been like? And especially, how has it been during COVID? Yeah. Um, so actually, a lot changed uh, before and after COVID. Before COVID, for example, we were not global yet. We were focusing first on Egypt and the MENA region. And now we are working in five different continents. We are working with countries from all over the world. A lot of change has happened after COVID actually. And as you were saying in the previous panel, it's because of the lockdown. Suddenly people cannot do everything in person. They cannot go in labs, they cannot go in class and they need the learning. So suddenly the whole world understood the value of these solutions like ours and other solutions. So we are now working with hundreds of thousands of students as opposed to only thousands two years ago. Uh, we are benefiting universities, we are benefiting high school students. Even recently we are working with the Ministry of Education in UAE to open it for the public schools there. So I believe we've, we've gone a lot of, um, um, uh, done a lot of progress since then. And a, a big part was being in events like this and like South Summit, I think it's not only about the exposure, but also about understanding that people value what we're doing and they are really giving us more of um, motivation to continue and proceed with what we're doing. Wow, so hundreds of thousands of students now, huh? So, yeah. and tell me, did COVID affect you or was it a positive effect? Exactly, as you say, it was a positive thing. I mean, unfortunately, it's making us all suffer on the personal level, but on the business level, I think at tech solution, our old understanding now that um, they can leverage what's happening. They can tell people it's not a luxury anymore. Uh, you need to have these solutions in place. So it's been very, very uh, actually progressing for us since COVID hit. It's more than even triple or uh, four times um, the number of requests we are getting. And the students that we are even open the initiative for to, to open our, our experiments for free for them when COVID hit. That, uh, that was very uh, useful as well. All right, Khadija. So we're going to come back to you in a minute, but I want to move along with Cristobal, the uh, CEO and co-founder of Lingo Kids. Cristobal, how are you today? Mute. Hello. Hello. Sorry, I didn't realize. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you for inviting me. And where, where are you based right now, Cristobal? Where are you I'm right? in Madrid. I'm in Madrid. Oh, you're in Madrid. All right. That's great. Yes. So, Cristobal, talk to us about the last couple of years with Lingo Kids. What's it been like and how did COVID affect you guys? Well, what can I say? It's been a ride. Um, it's been a massive 
can grow for us. Uh, I know it sounds as a cliche as an entrepreneur saying these things, but uh, we've been, you know, like babbling the business uh, year on year, uh, the last couple of years. Last year, bittersweet, uh, but I mean, it, it was a massive push for us as well. Um, as we were seeing kind of like a close closures around the world, what we were doing basically was opening up Linux kits, allowing it uh, to be used for free. So nobody has to pay a subscription in the different countries where the schools were locked down. And that helped us to grow a lot, uh, the user base, uh, more presence, more brand awareness. We tripled the user base. We, are, uh, we just hit actually 30 million families uh, around the world. And we tripled as well uh, the team. Uh, we are over 100 people right now uh, in the company. And as well as part of the evolution in this couple of years is we've moved uh, from only teaching kind of like language acquisition English into teaching in English. Um, this is a uh, demand from parents. Uh, we were asking us, okay, when my child which is like four or five years old, they want to learn about reading, writing, math, and even software skills of critical thinking, communication, empathy. So together with the feedback of parents, we're incorporating that type of content and helping kids learn um, everything uh, from two to eight years old in, uh, in all, all these different topics. All right. Okay. Um, so we're going to start now with you, Cristola, before we go back to um, Khadija. Where do you see the next couple of years? I mean, how, how exciting is it for Lingo Kids? What, what do you foresee for the next couple of years as a company? Now that we're going, get out, getting out of COVID, uh, what, what do you, how is the horizon here? How do you see it? Um, well, I'm sure, I mean, you've talked about this already, uh, but I mean, the, the situation with COVID, again, it was unfortunate, it was very bittersweet, uh, we saw some growth, but I think in general, it's not like a one time off, like uh, there was some growth and that's it. Uh, we think it's, it's a massive trend that has happened, like it's jumping to the future where people, in some cases, they were uh, even concerned about using like mobile screens and like uh, digital education with the kids, and then suddenly like everybody saw like, okay, we have to use this right now. And um, that's kind of like what all of us are betting, right? Like the future is going to be like this. It's going to be a combination of physical and digital interaction. And we saw that happening instead of like taking four, five, or ten years, happening in like four or five months. Um, so we see this trend is continuing to happen. Um, for Linux in particular, we're going to keep growing uh, in terms of like the curriculum, the content that we are developing. Um, we, uh, as I said, like expanded from language acquisition into like general education in English. Um, so keep working on that, keep working on uh, the team structure. We are actually hiring a lot of people, uh, especially on the engineering side. We have a lot of uh, challenges around scaling the technology, how do we cope with all these users, all the data that we're generating for improving the recommendations and the personalization of the experience for the kids, but also how do we use the data for improving the content that we're creating. Um, beyond that, a couple of other things, we are talking as well with uh, several uh, firms uh, to create like uh, long format uh, TV content uh, for video demand platforms. And then last year, we also did a funding round with a toy manufacturing company called Ravensburger. So we are also like expanding into like the physical world and creating like uh, Lego Kids branded uh, digital items. And we want to uh, cre create a subscription around that. Um, so expanding into like, okay, not, it's not only like the digital product, but we actually extend the learning experience at home with physical uh, items like uh, books, toys, board games, and so on. All right. Sounds exciting. All right. Here, back to Khadija. Khadija, tell yeah. me about Praxi Labs. What, what does the next two years look like? Are you going to raise $20 million also? No. I'm only joking. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> it's actually... Um, our aim to do that, but not in the next two years, on the, more on the five years, but let's focus on the three years first. So All we right. take it a bit of step by step. In terms of the product, we have a very exciting uh, roadmap similar to Christopher. We are thinking of adding things related to personalized learning. We are also going, working on our app. So now everything is working on laptops. We are going to have our own uh, app to be made to the application as well. We're also uh, giving a lot of focus for the accessibility because we are doing so much for everyone to be using these labs and we want students with um, disabilities to be using our labs as well because they have the same rights and we are focusing on that in the next year but also we have things very important for us and very exciting which is we are talking now to professors on giving them the ability to create their own lab so rather than waiting for us to create simulation, they will be able to create their own simulations. And that's something in our two next years roadmap, and we're very excited about it. And on the business level, 
I believe we are aiming to be one of the top three. We are already one of them, but we hope to be really the first in um, providing people with a STEM hub. So it would be the hub that people goes to when they want to learn STEM virtual education. Um, that's, that's a quick uh, thing about the next two years. All right, thank you, Teja. So very quickly now, last point that I'd like you to make is, um, I'm here representing IE University, as you know, not uh, South Summit, but tell me, you know, a lot of people question, wh what do these events like South Summit and other events like that, or even events like Rise Up Egypt, which you probably know well in, in Egypt, uh, Khadija, but these types of events like South Summit, how do they help entrepreneurs? What does it do for entrepreneurs in terms of the, you know, the progress of their, of their startup? What, why is it, well, tell me, what, what, how did South Summit affect you guys? Cristobal, you want to start? Sure thing. I mean, it's, it's all about uh, networking, right? It's all about getting to know people, getting to be known. Um, so it gets you a lot of exposure. It gets you like a lot of interest from different parties, not only from the investment side of things, but partnerships. Like we've done a lot of them, like Oxford is the Press, Ravensburg, and a few others. And many of them, actually, we meet them through these type of events. And then on the hiring front as well, like getting exposure to like people that might be interested in your product, like getting to know what you're doing, getting to know you as a person. Um, so all about networking and getting to know people. All right, great, thank you. Khadija? Um, I'm trying to find something that Christopher didn't say, but of course added to the exposure and a lot of PR we are getting, which is amazing for the marketing team and they love us for this. But I think connecting with different mindsets and mentality is very important, especially for startups and founders. I think we need this motivation every now and then to continue with all this stress and the challenges that we are having. So when you find people in one time it's Europe, one time it's UK, many uh, region, accepting and uh, valuing your uh, solution, it's really giving you reason also to continue going and that you are on the right path. And of course, connecting with other partners and investors, it's, uh, it's always a, a great place to meet with people from all the world. Yeah, I agree. It truly makes global a reality. Well, thank you very much, Khadija, Cristobal. Thank you for joining us today. I know, you know, time is money, and we, you know, very grateful for the fact that you made some time to be with us today. All right. So the show thank continues. You very much. Thank you. The show thank continues, you. and I've got with me my partner in crime from South Summit. How are you, Paris? Thank I am you. good. How are you doing? And tell me, do we have some exciting news for we the audience? We do have exciting news. We have a winner for this competition, this education competition. But before I announce the winner, I just want to take this chance to invite all our audience and all our startups to take this opportunity and compete in our startup competition. We are in the last days for all the startups that want to join us in the South Summit of this year edition. So please make sure we are, we only have like two more weeks left with the competition open. So please, all our startups get together and apply for this great competition. As you heard, Cadilla and Guillermo, it's a great opportunity for, for all of you to get exposure and to get uh, PR and to get to know the right people and even to get investment. Who knows, maybe that's 20 million that we were hearing about. And uh, now I'm gonna announce the winner who will be with us in Madrid, the 5th and 7th, from the 5th to the 7th of October. Our winner of this Education Virtual South Summit is Mindstone Melody, congratulations. Mindstone. See, I, I knew that uh, energy was going to pay off, Melody. Some words, Melody? Yes, thank you so much. I'm absolutely thrilled. Um, yes, it's, it's difficult for me to hide my passion for this space and for, for education and the reason why I, I've chosen to be in that field. And it's a shame we have so few minutes um, to pitch because there is so much more to what I just said today. But uh, I mean, we're going towards, of course, a vision of education equity. And that's what we're trying to do with leveraging the content that's freely available on the internet. Education equity. I like that. Excellent. Big hand for Melody and Mindstone. Congratulations. We'll see you in October.
It's going to be great to have you back, Melody, and you have much more time to pitch in October. So just make sure to repeat all those great, great, great answers that you gave today. So before we leave Paris, I want to invite all, all our audience to our nev next virtual summit that will take place, as always, here in the IE War Room. It will be based in the regional competition of Africa countries, and it will take place next Thursday, 20th of June, of June, of May. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> thinking overhead. So please, all of you, come and, and join us again in June. In May. In again. May. I'm so, pissed. thank you again for joining us. This was the 8th Virtual South Summit. Next Thursday, May 20th, join us as we discover startups in Africa. Thank you.